Okay, guys. So uh, I said uh, Clark's uh, in his freshman year, his uh, per game assist numbers were like four. That's it's totally off. It was like one point eight, and then it was two, like two point three in his second year. But uh, at least per one hundred possessions, which you know, it was a uh, four assists per game per one hundred in his second year. Still, it's still kind of remarkable just thinking about the kind of player you would expect Brandon Clark to be to be averaging that many assists. So the point to a smaller degree stands. Welcome to the third round picks podcast with me today is Mike Bibbins, AKA Adam Bibbs and at Bibbs corner on Twitter. Unfortunately, Richard Stamen, AKA at Maz draft is, will not be with us this week for the podcast because he is too wrapped up in work and uh, whatever other duties he has. Yeah, How you he's doing, just too Bibbs? cool for us. He's just too cool for us. Yeah, he's too uh, cool. <laughs> no. Um, but no, I'm, I'm a little under the weather, but, you know, I'm going to power through. Um, and I did notice last week, nobody asked how you were doing. So how are you doing today, Max? Uh, finals is going on during this recording, but by the time you hear it, I'll be on the back end. Uh, Friday is going to be a hard day, but Wednesday... Wednesday, a.k.a. the day after we're recording, is going to be absolutely nothing. So I'm going to get a lot of good studying in, get a little editing in, get a lot more film watching in than I have been able to, unfortunately, due to inconveniences. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. This Christmas break, I'm going to knock out so much film watching. I just don't even, I can't even comprehend how much it is right now. No, I'm definitely looking forward to the time off work myself so I can get Spend spend a day or two just watching games. So. Yeah, more than a day or two for me. I ain't got anything else to do with my life, so. <laughs> well, I got I to gotta rest at some point, so yeah. <laughs> this is life. This isn't a game. All right. <laughs> well, first we have a little bonus from last episode that we forgot to really uh, expound on. Kevin Herter picked like 17th. No, 17th was DiVincenzo. 18th, right? 18th was Kevin Herter's pick. Let me do research already. No, 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 no. I'm typing. I'm just <laughs> stalling. Okay? Herter was picked 19th. Oh, we're both wrong. Uh, Walker must have been picked 18th. But Kevin Herter picked 19th. Uh, the good news is that now we got a, a look at him last week when he played the Mavs. And uh, he was pretty pretty decent. I really liked how he was able to put the ball on the floor and get to the rim, even though it wasn't like anything crazy or anything. Just the fact you can see a guy make some secondary playmaking and secondary scoring always helps a guy like Trey Young who's really having a hard time with it right now. Did you see the report on Bleacher Report that um, the Hawks have a four-point line on their practice court? I, I did. I halfway saw it. I didn't get to, to read into it, but um, it, when you got guys like Herder and Young out there, it's not surprising. Yeah, it's just like a little thing. It's not anything related to rules, hopefully, because uh, I think you might tear your hair apart with that one. No, you know, the funny part is, I believe on uh, the last 2K, um, when you're going through the GM mode or whatever, they have off-season rule changes, and I do think the four-point line was one of them that came up. So um, I don't I don't think anybody wants that. Well, um, I think there's people that would disagree with you, and it's all the Curry fans. <laughs> Uh, but he's at in the gym range, so yeah, we don't need to give him any more advantages. Yeah, you know what? It looks like it might be heading that way anyway, but you know, we'll see. Uh, in regards to Kevin Herter, other than what we saw on Wednesday, he's been putting up pretty decent shooting numbers despite, you know, not looking the greatest in summer league from what I recall. So that's been nice to see. And anything to get some shooting next to Trey Young, who's struggling right now, and just any help is really what they can ask for. But at the same time, it's kind of a weird uh, juxtaposition because you kind of, at this point, are just like, you know what, let's go tank for Zion. Because, you know, he's, he's to be honest, regardless of who you think is the number one pick in the draft, and I'm not about to say who I think that is, Zion is the guy that would fit very well in their offense. Yeah. They could uh, they could use another, another freak out there because uh, – when you've got smaller guys, a smaller point guard, uh, you need as much length and athleticism around him as possible to make up his uh, defensive deficiencies. 
and imagine those transitions with uh, Zion yeah. and Trey Young, just like John Zion Collins. takes the rebound at the court, <laughs> and then he can be the decision maker either to lob it to John Collins or pass off to Trey Young for the thirty footer. And then you got Herder also running up the court. On yeah, the other another side. shooter. And then you know if Torian Prince can get his stuff together, that's another option. Yeah, they, I mean they've got some talent. It's just a matter of growing, developing, and figuring out how to win. And figuring out whether or not Lloyd Pierce is a good coach. <laughs> but we'll well, we don't know. We don't know what the agenda is down there. But all of yeah. that to say, Herder, sorry we we overlooked you last week. Um, I think he's got a bright future. I think he's going to be in the league for a while. Yeah, hopefully it ends up working out like JB Biggers' staff did last year, where they were the, the Memphis uh, Grizzlies were just tanking so hard. But it turns out Biggers' staff was a pretty good coach. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, moving on, we have the big, big topic of this episode. Gonzaga has been uh, definitely popping our eyeballs with uh, their play, with specifically that Brandon Clark block over a week ago now, it feels like. Oh Actually, it is over a week ago uh, on uh, East Ponds. That was an incredible block, and uh, we're about to get into Brandon Clark, Rui Achimura, and then a little talk on uh, Petrusev and Norvell and them, and Perkins even a little bit. So... Biz, I want to start with you. Uh, you were having some uh, Twitter talking about uh, Rui Hachimura. Why don't you start with him? All right. So uh, I think I've mentioned on the podcast a couple of times, I-, I liked Rui just in barely halfway paying attention when I watched Gonzaga games. Uh, when I accidentally watched the Gonzaga Duke game, he kind of pops off the page. Um, physically, he looks great. I mean, 6'8", 225, big, solid guy. Um Kind of looks like Aaron Gordon from a distance, if you squint a little bit. Um, from what I saw after doing a deep dive on him, I watched the Tennessee game and then the North Carolina game, which just so happened to be the two games that they lost. Um, I did find, start to find holes in his game. Um, so first of all, I think, he's, I think he sets good screens, which you want from your big. Um, his mid-range jumper is deadly, like that free throw line jumper for him. If you let him have that shot, it's money all day. Um, I like that he's not scared to push the ball on the break, put the ball on the floor. Um, but he doesn't have a lot of wiggle when he does that. Um, but my and my biggest two things that are worrisome for me as far as him being a potential lottery pick, uh, I don't think he finishes well through contact. Um, I've seen a few times where he'll put the ball on the floor and he starts looking like he's going to make a strong drive. And then as soon as he gets contact, he's falling out of bounds or he just completely gives up on the drive. Um, And then the other thing is that his jumper is flat. So that mid-range jumper, if he can catch it in space, let it fly like it's good. But anytime he's further or he gets bothered in any way, because the shot is so flat, like it's any any type of thing that knocks him off his rhythm is going to make that shot go off. Uh, it's either going to hit front rim hard or it's back rim hard. Uh, so that's something I would like to see change as well for him uh, going forward. But he is a little raw. Yeah, but definitely a lot of development since last year. But, you know, you only have so much time left in your development whenever he's like already 21 years old right. or so. Right. So he's going to... He's got to really sh- keep showing out this year. And uh, my biggest thing with him, outside of everything you already mentioned, that's a p- big positive. Whenever he catches a rebound off the glass on defense, he can actually push the floor like he's, uh, like he's a forward and uh, try to score with it and you know do some good things most of the time. But his decision-making is pretty rough, and that's going to have to be fine-tuned. Right. Um, I think another pretty nice thing with him is just the fact that you can post them up down low versus mismatches and get some pretty easy buckets versus like wings who think they could take him, but like he can just kind of get it over him a little bit or get right. a little bit of some good position and then lay it in. But one thing that really frustrates with me, uh, especially on offense is how he sometimes makes himself look really like lost, especially even with the ball. He's like, trying to make these turns and he just looks like it's leading to absolutely nowhere. Right. Or, and then on defense, he looks absolutely lost. Uh, I remember the GIF 
uh, slash clip whenever you see uh, him like getting totally turned around and then Admiral Schofield gets a wide open three. And he had another one of those where like he ran into the paint and ended up leaving Grant Williams open for a wide open three in like the first half too. And it's pretty ugly, but uh, you know, if he can, yeah, if he could figure that out, that'd be nice. Right. And you can tell he's thinking a lot when he's on defense, like where am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? Um, and going back to his, uh, con- continuing with his defense, um, when I was watching him because of his size and a little bit of athleticism, I was trying to see if he had any type of potential as like a big three guard. And uh, fortunately, I didn't see that from him. Um, I don't think he's quick enough laterally. Uh, he's he's quick in a straight line and he's explosive in space underneath the rim. But again, any type of contact, he's not finishing through people. Um, he doesn't have any wiggle with his with his handle, uh, and then like you said, his decision making is kind of rough. Um, he can make the simple pass, but um, sometimes that means he sees a pass, telegraphs it, and throws it throws it away. There was a lot of that going on in the uh, the North Carolina game. Yeah, I didn't get to the North Carolina game, but uh, one thing I was really appreciative is how whenever he was playing Illinois, he he decided to take over like right away. And it was just nice to see, even though sometimes it doesn't work out for him that at least he's confident in his offensive game and isn't afraid. And, you know, you have some guys who have these talents, but like seem too humble or whatever. Cough, cough, Isaiah Roby. What can we get you some more buckets or something? Please. I love you, but you don't do enough, even though you have enough. And uh, yeah, that's my 22nd rant on Isaiah Roby. But, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all we got to say about Rui Hachimura. Uh, for me personally, I'd like to see him picked in like I don't know, maybe if looking at this draft, maybe in the twenties, maybe. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking too. Like, I don't think he's a lottery talent that you want to bank on, but I think he's a guy that maybe you could turn into something. And 20s would be like if, like, I was really low on the rest of the guys in this draft that I haven't watched yet. <laughs> but uh, if I was a bit more of a fan of those guys, I might be like, uh, you might have to get pushed into, like, near 30, maybe even second round, just, just because the defensive instincts are going to be a major pain to deal with. Right. Like, he's, right now, if, if, I'm, if I'm projecting him next level, I'm thinking he's going to be in the G League for a little while just to kind of fine-tune some things, if nothing else. Yeah, he's an interesting project for sure. Moving on to uh, the second guy, or in my case, the number one guy. I'm not sure how you've been feeling about him, Bibbs. Brandon Clark, that block, though. <laughs> that block. I mean, um, it's good to have a highlight package starting early. So. Yeah, but like, regardless of that block, which I didn't even get to in the, watching the full Tennessee game. I just saw it on Twitter. But... Regardless, watching the amount of Tennessee game I got through, uh, he didn't really look as great in that first half, but he still made some nice plays. He just got into foul trouble a little bit and uh, kind of didn't always make the best defensive decision, but there was a couple times where he looked really nice, uh, making a quick reaction and putting his arms up and using his verticality and leaping to like contest a shot and force a miss or cutting off a drive, or even on offense. This was the amazing part. He's like six foot eight, and he, I wouldn't say he has guard skill, but it's definitely more advanced in like the big man mold that he has in his game. And it's right. pretty awesome to see. It kind of looks like you're watching a more quick version of Rui, but like he's not as like built as Rui or anything, but he has the defensive instincts and a bunch of other advantages on Rui. And, you know, if the jump shot ever came together, which it probably won't just because he doesn't really do it um, at all. Yeah. But the free throws aren't too bad. So, you know, that's something. Uh, Biz, do you want to talk about him? Yeah. So everything that you said, I, I got that as well. Um, he's athletic build um, because he is kind of smaller. I don't know if he's 6'8", six, 6'7". Six, um, I was kind of seeing what his projection is to the next level as a three four um because he doesn't have a shot i don't think the three is going to work out for him so we're looking at him as a small power forward um he does have a strong base even though he's got like a slight frame up top 
Um, he's not, like you said, as jacked as Rui, but he is he's pretty strong. Um, you mentioned foul trouble in the Tennessee game, and I think that's something that's going to be a problem for him, period. Uh, he's super aggressive chasing after blocks, and he likes to gamble on D sometimes, like jumping passing lanes. Um, yeah. But, but with that said, like I like that he's willing to push the ball on the break. He's super bouncy. Um, he kind of reminds me of like a smaller Dwight Powell with oh, I, better, yeah. better ball handling, like the way he's just all over the place. But, you know, the one nice thing about uh, Brandon Clark is you don't have to have over the course of a season uh, uh, Brandon Clark hitting the face counter. <laughs> he's not as goofy as Dwight, but yeah, like that same, like when you watch Dwight, you just see how athletic he is. And for, like, the past few years, it's been clear that he didn't know what to do with it. He's finally starting to look like maybe he's figuring it out. But that's what, what, what I see with Brandon Clark. He's all over the place, blocking shots, grabbing rebounds, strong rebounds, and dunking on people. Um, so he's exciting in that aspect. The question is going to be where he goes and how he's utilized as, like, a smaller power forward type with no, like, jumper at all. Um, with that said, his field goal percentage from the two is ridiculous he has a good floater um and like a little bit of a hook shot inside so he, he can score the basketball inside he's not kenneth Fareed bad with the basketball um but i you would like to see him develop some sort of mid-range game at least yeah the interesting thing is uh on sports reference he was listed not only as a forward but as a guard which has me thinking, and then I saw his assist numbers was like four per game at San Jose State's freshman year. Was like, did he like grow like three inches between his freshman year and now or something? And like he used to be like this ISO guard or something, and now he's like he was like a slasher or something. I have no context on this, but I'd love to hear what y'all have to say as a more experienced people than me. But here's the thing for sure is the fact that you have this guy that can actually uh, drive on closeouts and create his own offense against like, you know, some smaller guys or against guys that don't have their feet set. That's provides some amount of value. And then he's not, he's not particularly unaware on the offensive end of the floor. And then on defense, despite not necessarily always making the best rotations, his around the rim and sticks are pretty great. Even if he's aggressive a bit for me and, uh, he also seems to have this like perfect timing of when to go for the block sometimes. And it's just incredible to watch. Like he blocked right. off the dribble jumpers like three times in the Illinois game. And I was like, Oh my God, that is amazing. <laughs> I need it's, me some of that. It's that explosiveness. Like he's so quick off the ground and he has a, a good second jump too. Um, like he's, he'll be up and back down and back up in the air again before the other guy lands type of type of bounce. So um, he's exciting, and again, he's just one of those guys where he's going to have to go to a system that knows how to use that type of skill. For sure. Um, but would you put him over Rui at this point? If uh, if I'm coming up in the draft and I have to pick one or the other, um, if I'm a team that's young and knowing that I'm not going to be competing anytime soon and trying to develop, then maybe I take a chance on Rui. Uh, if I'm a team that needs a guy that's going to come in and contribute right away, I'm taking Clark. Well, what if you need to develop, but you have that one guy and you need to build around that one guy? Would Either you still, Clark or Rui? Like if, you, like, if you have a clear, like, guy you think is number one, but you okay. need to build the pieces around the number one and he still needs to develop. Like, let's say you're Trey Young in Atlanta, but you don't, you don't, you have John Collins, but the defense isn't necessarily there yet. He might be better as a four. We'll see. <laughs> Like You're answering just, your own question. The answer is Clark, definitely. Yeah. Well, I'm just <laughs> I'm I'm posing my opinion. Like you know, we're just for obviously, the defensive instincts alone. Um, I would rather have Clark helping my defensively weak guy than expecting. Yeah, obviously. To. I just like to make sure I can ask the question because you know, <laughs> obviously, I would say you're a bit more old school than me. So, oh, yeah. you know, Rui kind of can appear to like appeal to more old school just because he's kind of jacked and stuff right. like this. Whereas Brandon Clark's like the undersized blocks, uh, shot blocking traditional center, but like looks kind of out of place with, among all these seven footers. 
Right. If Rui like, was six ten, we might be having a different discussion, but because he's not, yeah, it's, he's it's like, hard for me to take that risk. Yeah, I'm not even sure if six ten would be enough for me. That to be seven foot. Yeah, he straight. might need to be seven foot actually. <laughs> yeah, just because uh, Brandon Clark's so athletic. Right. Moving on to uh, the more peripheral guys, we'll start with Zach Norvell Jr. Zach Norvell. Um, he's a guy. You want to start or? Uh, I could talk about him, but like, I don't, I don't like him. But, <laughs> but uh, like his shot is kind of interesting because sometimes like it really gets like in the like in the limited sample I've seen so far, there was times where it just didn't seem to work at all or like he had some kind of kink in his jumper but uh i think ultimately he's like a fine college player and like just the fact that he like has size can shoot sometimes plays defense but sometimes looks like he's getting totally lost and he often doesn't have his feet set right or like his defensive stance isn't all the way down and then he gets beat off the dribble or he opens up a driving angle too much and then he gets beat he he get, he got beat like a lot, just in general, and it was kind of frustrating to watch because some of those guys like were like kind of like six eight guys that weren't that fast on Illinois or on Tennessee, and it's just like you shouldn't be getting beat this bad. <laughs> exactly, and it's just his his. I think he's really active and busy, so he can't like settle himself down. And if if you're moving, then guys are gonna take advantage of that most of the time, if they're any decent basketball players um that's kind of what what the impression that i got is that he's he's incredibly active on both sides of the ball but that's not necessarily a good thing all the time for him yeah Um, i think he just needs some seasoning or something right like he's a guy he's not gonna let your offense stagnate because he's gonna be running around he's gonna be slashing even if that means throwing up an air ball layup um he's gonna be doing something for sure. But watching him, I just didn't see anything special that would make me want to draft him. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, maybe just because he's a wing and, like, he does things, I don't know, throw a pick at him in, like, the 50s. <laughs> it's kind of right. it's the, it's the same thoughts with him as Charles Matthews, even though Charles Matthews is a different player. But it's, like, kind of the same thought process in my mind right now. Yeah, physically he looks like a guy, but, like, I'm not seeing him, like, putting it together. I'm not seeing him as a guy that you can have as your lead guard your your to starting two guard or anything like that for sure moving on to uh philippe petrusev uh biz you wanted to go first on him sure um so again he's another guy he physically kind of looks like zach collins but uh and he's he's not he's surprisingly aggressive um is what i took away from him um, you expect a guy tall and skinny to be a little soft, but he's not afraid to back guys down. Uh, he's got good touch inside, and his post game is not bad against guys that are his size, but I'm a, concerned about how he's going to handle a guy that's actually bigger than him. Um, and that's the next development for him, I think, is to gain weight and be able to handle bigger bodies. Yeah, I think my thing with him, the most of the things I saw were like, I saw him play against Illinois and he got beat up by this 6'10 big man on Illinois roster named uh, Georgie Bishanishvili. And uh, I just kind of got turned off. Honestly, I was like, <laughs> I could not take him getting beat up in the post this hard every single time. And then his offense was like basic to me and it wasn't really that interesting. Right. Right. And like he was kind of in people's top 100s, and since he's like fallen out of all of them, so like I think it's pretty merited to say he's not really he's interesting not right now. Out. Yeah, he's not coming. Out. He doesn't need to come out anytime soon. Um, but there, there's something to work with there. I'm just not sure if he's gonna. He's definitely not Zach Collins, if if that's what they're trying to project him as. I'm I'm really waiting for Killian Tilly to come back though. Yeah, for that's sure. It. He. He's going to revolutionize his entire Gonzaga rank, and I could easily see him, even despite my Brandon Clark fandom, I could see him taking over him just because he has all that offensive skill set. Yeah. Um, he was the guy I was really in love with last year uh, before he got hurt. Yeah. 
I would say I'd probably be pretty in love with them too, based on the things I've been hearing. Moving on to um, Josh Perkins. I don't even have much to say about Perkins. He he looks like a college guard <laughs> and not really a great one to me. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's probably the same. Although apparently he's sometimes he ends up being the guy has to be like the scorer of the team as a guard. But uh, he might be that type of guy to me who like ends up on like a summer league and ends up standing out kind of like Trayvon Blewett and then ends up on an NBA roster as a two-way player. I can see that. Like a lot of teams, it's not, you can never have enough point guards that know your system. Um, I think Memphis learned that the hard way a few years ago. And so they're one of those teams that make sure they keep an extra guard and all those two ways are in the D league that know their system. Um, he's a guy that could be that. I will say his arms look stubby to me. So if his arms are shorter than six, three, it might just be an L and I might just have to like give up on him entirely <laughs> because like, his contests on jumpers are like some of them. Like if he step, if he's not, if he's more than a step behind his man, it's meaningless. Like there's zero point. You might as well just like let him shoot it. <laughs> it's really sad. <laughs> I mean, he can he can maybe yell at you. I don't know that that affects people sometimes. Or like I don't know, like just like like put both his hands up and then like just jump out at them, like dive or something. <laughs> Just don't don't zaza patchouli at anybody, and we're good. Well, he stuck the foot out. He didn't jump. He just stuck the foot out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, is that everybody on Gonzaga that we need to talk about? Uh yeah, I do think so. Moving on to your favorite little topic, and our favorite little topic is talking about small teams that are going to be on national television. Bum, right. bum, bum. So if you like scouting guys or you want, you're you interested, you've heard some names, like we want to try to go forward and let you know which ones of those guys are going to be on television uh, for you to check out and win. Uh, so I think if we're coming out Thursday, the first game on our list is Utah State and Houston. Uh, and that's going to be at 8 o'clock on ESPN3. Do you have the guys to watch in that game? I do. All right. First off, on Houston, we have uh, Dijon Giroux. Beautiful pronunciation. That's my, my best guess. And then on Utah State, we have, drum roll, please, Nemius Keda. Please rate me on Twitter, y'all. I am ready for it. <laughs> but I'm giving, it a, uh, I'm giving it a seven. That wasn't bad, actually. Yeah. I'm going to, I just like confidence, baby. Let's do this. Um, next game, Bibbs. Next game. So moving to Friday, uh, we've got a couple of games. We've got Illinois State UCF at seven. That's also ESPN three. Uh, hold on. It was UCF and, uh, sorry, remind me again. UCF and Illinois State. Oh, yes. Malik Yarbrough. And uh, that'll be on FS. No, that's that's on ESPN three. You want to yes. give the time for uh, Utah State in this game as well. Yep, Utah State's eight p.m. Eastern, seven o'clock Central, and then the uh, UCF Illinois State game on Friday is seven o'clock Eastern, six o'clock Central. Sounds good. Moving on to uh, the next game. All right, so then uh, also on Friday, we've got Marquette at Buffalo. Buffalo, the surprising ranked team so far. Marquette also currently ranked. Um, that game is actually at 8.30 on FS1. And uh, there's some interesting guys on, on the, in this game, too, if I'm not mistaken. All right. Oh, my God, I just froze. You're going to have to say that again. <laughs> The entire the entire uh, game. The, just the the, just the 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 teams. <laughs> just the teams. Okay, uh, Marquette and Buffalo is uh, the second game on Friday, eight thirty. Uh, Marquette, uh, the uh, Marcus Howard, uh, Sam Hauser. Oh yeah, Marcus Howard and Sam Hauser, and then also if you care about his brother, I believe he has a brother on the team. I don't okay. know his name though, but I don't think he's good yet or anything. But I know he's on the team. 
could be something to watch there for there, but should be a good game to rank teams and Buffalo is the, the high. I think they're still undefeated right now. So maybe I actually, I think they are. I think, I don't know. It depends. Cause I, I think I saw them undefeated on Google, but I could be wrong. And I don't know. I'm, I don't know. Am I afraid? I don't know. Could change uh, ne- by the time it comes, this comes out. So. <laughs> oh, yes. This will be out like two days after recording. So it's entirely possible that none of what we're talking about makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have to take the, the L. Shall we move to Saturday? Yes. All right. So Saturday, um, some really, really good games. Uh, first of all, John ja Morant which uh, he's he's the hot name right now, point guard at Murray State, potential lottery pick. Uh, they're taking on Auburn on Saturday. Ooh, we have uh, Auburn. We have uh, Anthony McElmore is his name. That's so this. Oh, my God. And then I blank as I casually blank on the other team. So uh, the second team is, of of course, Murray State, but, uh, of course, prospect would be John Morant. It's going to be live on uh, SEC Network at uh, 3.30 p.m. Central Saturday, December 22nd, of course. That's, that's all. Sorry for the interruption, but we had a small error on the original recording. <laughs> um, did we get Furman? Uh, no. Go ahead. Furman, do you have that? Yeah. Uh, oh wait, no. Furman basketball is not on. They're not on TV. It sucks because I think they're not on TV. <laughs> Furman LSU. Oh, it's on like SEC Network Plus. Right, so if you right. happen to be lucky enough to have ESPN Plus, watch this game because Furman's good, but, but I have no idea if they have anybody worth watching. And uh, LSU has a bunch of prospects, but for some reason they're they're not ranked. So I have no I have no explanation of why, as I have not actually watched LSU yet. So uh, I guess they haven't been able to put it together. Yeah, sometimes it takes those teams a little while to figure it out, but um, that's why you have those warm-up games on the way. Uh, but Furman will be a good test for them because they're currently ranked also. So They are kicking a lot of people right now. <laughs> Villanova included. Yeah, yeah, they're not playing games. So, uh, so there's got to be somebody doing something over there. So that should be an interesting game to look out for. Um the other game that we had, and this one should be available to pretty much everybody, is Wichita State uh, at, versus VCU. That yeah, is at 4 yeah, o'clock time. Eastern on ESPN, 3 o'clock Central, or ESPN2. I'm sorry, ESPN2. And uh, for that one, we got um, Wichita State, we got Marcus McDuffie. Correct, correct. Uh, VCU, I don't believe, has anybody of note. Nobody of note, but uh, should be an interesting. They, they usually play tough defense, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how McDuffie handles handles that VCUD. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do we have anyone else? Is that it? That's that's all we got. Um, there's some tournaments over the Christmas break, so I'm sure some guys will be on TV then. And uh, check Twitter if you need to figure out where you can watch. Or. Uh... Maybe just check uh, another website, but we're not going to talk about that website. <laughs> use your me- use your available means, people. That's all I will say. Right. Use your means. Anyway, now, before we cut this off, we just wanted to say that the Mavs are actually playing as we record this podcast. Uh, well, not as we record it, but right after they're playing the Nugs. And yeah. uh, knowing our luck, Nikola Jokic is going to go off for 30 and 30. 15 so uh we'll be ready just, just 30 well he's 15 assists <laughs> i'm joking i'm joking 30 points 15 assists 10 rebounds triple double all right i mean you just spoke it into existence so we'll see I'm, i mean i'm i was already ready for it so i mean it is what it is <laughs> i mean deandre uh, everyone's like deandre is an interesting matchup versus nicole Jokic. like deandre can't touch nicole Jokic. if deandre decides to play he might make it a little bit interesting if he even if he decides to play, you can't touch that passing. True. Like we, we need Dorian Finney Smith to start. That's exactly what I was about to say. We just need to add more length to the starting lineup. Not just length, but defensive awareness. Finney Smith would be a you know, good start there. Yeah. 
and uh, I don't know, maybe just punt and kick. Because uh, since you know DeAndre doesn't really care, we'll just put Maxi in the lineup since he actually cares. <laughs> Next level thinking right there. Come on, you're the Maxi. You're the Maxi Kleba fan club president. I know, I know. It's it's hard for me, you know, as a as a Dirk lover and a Maxi stan. It is it's very difficult to to say, but Dirk's return has not been good for that second unit. Yeah, I don't I think, think it just it's just his rust. I don't think it's just his rust. I think it's his gravity, which was a problem. I want to say last year or the year before, whenever we got Harrison, where it's because he's on the court, guys want to give him the ball. And as we saw in the last game, that equals throwing the ball to him behind half court. Hmm. When you get a rebound, like, <laughs> please treat him like any other guy. Well, um, I mean, I'd say the limit is about 26 feet. <laughs> he thought about he, it. He would, didn't he almost shoot a 35? He did. It was like, oh, yeah. He thought about it hard. Just because it was his first game back at home. <laughs> he joked about it afterward, but that scared me for like half a second. I was like, whoa, Dirk. Hey, hey, if he made that shot, you know you would have lost your mind. Oh, it would have it would have went crazy. They would have had to like stop the game to let the fan recover. We've been like 30, Dirk 30K all over again. But I missed by one game. Oh, so I'm sorry. Insane. Well, so you, you know, I was fortunate enough to go to the Derek Harper game, the Derek Harper retirement game. So, Oh, um, man. That's my that's, bragging rights. That's good. I, haven't, yeah. I don't have a good Dirk memory in person. Like, in person? Uh, I don't have a good Dirk in person because like the first time I saw a Maz game in person was like 2016. So it was like the 15-16 <laughs> season. They played Blake Griffin, and uh, Blake Griffin went off. But, uh, you know, such is life. You know, it's okay. We got Luka dropping 30 now. So That's right. Luka Doncic may actually fulfill his prophecy of being an MVP by his fourth year of the league. It's possible. Is that a real thing? Is that a prophecy? Did he actually make that? He, yes, it's, it was. It was a. It was a Bleacher Report video. He's like, "This is my goals for the next five years. <laughs> year one, win Rookie of the Year, become King of New York." Sorry, Pazingas. <laughs> uh, year two was like increase swag level or something and then like train with like the best player in the world lebron james or something year three was like make the playoffs year four was be mvp and like buy some new cars and like i think it was hit up jennifer aniston and uh, be like year five was when the we used to relax <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, you know, it's you know, every dream, you know. All right. Yes, Luka Doncic can get what he wants, and he can you do whatever. What? I'm not gonna stop. Who am I? Hey, and he's also gonna have that tiger. <laughs> just... He is probably gonna have a tiger. I can't <laughs> see that happening. Like he said, he won. He said he won one. Yeah, I think he has a tattoo one too. Yeah, he does on the forearm, right? Yeah, with the with the Illuminati logo. <laughs> no comment. Uh, yeah, Illuminati confirmed. But anyways, with that spoof off segment being over, this has been the third round picks podcast with Max Levy and Mike Bibbins and Richard Stamen, who is absent. R.I.P. Not really. Uh, you can find <laughs> you can find uh, me on Twitter at Rangers King six six nine, and also on Lock Draft. Apparently. The site is going to be fixed soon, y'all, and we have some very promising meetings coming to be fixing this website. So if it could come up soon, that'd be really appreciated because we don't have anything up there right now, wow. even though I finished my work. Well, we have stuff up there from last year, but it, we don't want to put anything new on there because it looks like a WordPress because it is WordPress. Gotcha. But uh, <laughs> then... Um, Bibbs, you can find Mike Bibbins on Twitter at Bibbs and also at Bibbs Corner and his website, bibbscorner.com. Also, his Netflix work can be found at netflixlife.com. And uh, anything else developing for you, especially with Christmas coming around? Not not quite. I'm trying to get some stuff up on uh, my website soon, but uh, I'm going to let that be a surprise. Ooh, nice. And then... Uh, Mavs draft. Uh, his website is uh, 
I think he said he has something coming, but not quite yet. So for now, you can just look to his Twitter game, and uh, he'll show you off some fire takes, and he might end up making a tweet about how much he hates Peyton Pritchard again. <laughs> but uh, that's all we got for y'all this week. Uh, it's been lovely. Uh, y'all, y'all support. We've been having over 25 plays on both episodes, which is amazing. And the support we've been getting from guys like the Red Team is really helping us develop and advance our uh, podcasting quality. Uh, hope y'all like the shorter episode. And uh, that's all we got. Mm-hmm. See y'all.